Hello, everybody. I'm Sebastian Munoz, and I'm the Artistic Director of Force of Nature Productions and co-showrunner of the 12 Rushes of Christmas. And I am Randy Marquis, and I am pleased to be with you here tonight and also to be Sebastian's co-showrunner of this amazing production. All of us at Force of Nature are so excited to bring this amazing show to you. Everybody worked very hard in putting this together for you. So, Randy, perhaps you can explain to us what everybody can expect from this show tonight. You bet. So uh, if you have experienced a rush with us before, you kind of know how these things go. If you haven't, uh, it's quite the process. And feel free to visit our website, fawnproductions.com, to check out all the nitty gritty details of how we put a rush together. But the most important thing I wanted to share with you guys tonight is this is the biggest rush we have ever made. We have 30 actors. We have 12 directors, 12 writers, a composer, and a partridge in a pear tree when all is said and done. Um, and tonight, I think you're going to experience uh, 12 shows that are fun and funny and heartwarming. They may make you laugh. They may make you cry. But at the end of the day, I think you're going to just really enjoy all the creative artistic work that's been put into this show. I could not agree with you more, Randy. Putting it together, just reading the scripts and just watching the performances. I think everybody tonight is in for a big, big treat. Uh, as always, all our virtual shows that we've been doing recently are absolutely free. We are so delighted to be able to continue to entertain and create for you from the comfort of our own homes, de delivered directly to yours. So all the shows tonight, sit back and enjoy them. They're absolutely free. If you do feel compelled and you're able to do so, we are gladly accepting donations at the link right below uh, on your screen. Uh, I know times are difficult, but any little bit definitely helps and goes a long way uh, to keep our company going. But I'm very happy to report that uh, as with all our shows during the holiday season, we partnered with the wonderful organization of Strength United, which they're located here in Van Nuys, California. And they're a wonderful organization that focuses on uh, really helping all victims of domestic violence from all ages. So. 20% of the proceeds are going straight back to this wonderful organization during this difficult time. It's a time of giving, and we just could not be more thrilled to be able to support them during these times. We know 2020 has been a difficult year for a lot of people, and so we are very excited to be able to give back to some folks that may be just a little less fortunate than we are at this time of the year. Uh, and just as importantly, we are also very excited to share this with you. Uh, we have been doing holiday rushes for a while now. It is how we end our season. Um, and normally we get a chance to get together and celebrate uh, in person. We can't do that this year. So instead, we're going to celebrate virtually with people across the country uh, who will participate and enjoy it, this show uh, virtually <laughs> over Zoom. Um, and hopefully we can laugh and cry and just think about the better times to come in 2021 so ladies and gentlemen from our force and nature family to yours across the world wherever you may be please accept our best wishes a merry christmas and happy holidays and know that we can't wait to see you hopefully in 2021 in person but sit back relax grab a cup of cocoa and enjoy the 12 rushes of christmas Are you ready to open your Christmas Eve present, Amy? It's going to be pajamas again, isn't it? <laughs> Why can't it be something different, like a, like a hippopotamus? <laughs> what, what would you feed it? Your Brussels sprouts? <laughs> no, it's not pajamas. Really? Are you pulling my leg? Well, why don't you open it and find out? Drummer boy from my collection. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Two. Twelve drummer boys. Were there supposed to be so many? Well, I thought just one. Let me check my email and see if they got the order wrong. But you, my dear, have to go to bed so Santa can come. 
Good night. Hello, I'm Amy. I'll call you Ben. It's nice to meet you, Ben. Guess what? I'm waiting up for Santa tonight. Some of my friends at school say that he's not real, but what do you think? I know, right? That's a silly question. Of course he's real. Or is he? Oh! Oh! Ah! Is that? Who's there? Oh! Hey, you're not supposed to be awake. What are you? I I I'm new at this. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Claus. I'm filling in for Santa. I was waiting for Santa. Oh, he can't be here tonight. Does this mean that Santa's real? Of course. Who do you think brings you presents? Your parents? <laughs> Where do kids get these silly ideas? <laughs> well, some of my friends say that he doesn't exist because there's no proof. No one's ever seen him. Oh, that's because he does such a good job. I wonder what he's doing now while I'm here. Hmm. Why couldn't Santa come? Oh, Prancer stepped on his foot. He feels Horrible, poor thing. Yeah, poor Santa. No, oh, I was talking about Prancer. He feels bad for injuring Santa. I bet he's upset that he couldn't come. Oh, Prancer is up on the roof right now. Well, he's actually in the garden. Oh, we had a rough landing. Oof. I was talking about Santa. Santa protested staying behind. I had to wave a plate of his favorite cookies under his nose to distract him. And then what did he do? Well, he ate the cookies and then he went to the toy factory to experiment. The last time he tinkered with toys, oh, he made teddy bears with, with robot heads and, and dolls with dinosaur heads. Those sound like really cool toys. I could add them to my collection. You have a collection of mismatched dolls? No, no, I have a collection of cool trinkets, like this one. See, my mom got them for me today. Ooh, that's lovely. But why are there so many drummer boys? I'm not sure, my mom said she ordered me just one, but when I opened the box, there were 12. Like the song. What? Well, it's Christmas Eve, and your trinket is a drummer boy, so the company sent you 12 of them. 12 drummers drumming. Oh, get it? That's cool. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I ought to finish up here. There are millions of children out there, and I still have a lot of homes to visit tonight. Okay. Wait. I don't need 12. You can give the rest to the other kids, and maybe one to Santa? Please let him know that I hope he feels better. Oh, I will. Thank you. Oh, I'll give them to kids who don't have much. Oh, they'll certainly appreciate the extra present. You have a kind heart, Amy. Thank you, Mrs. Claus. Good luck. And good night. to tell the other kids at school about this. <laughs> Amy, why are you still up? I thought I told you to go to bed. Sorry, Mom, but guess what? What? Mrs. Claus came. Yeah, she's filling in for Santa. Look, she left us presents, and I gave her the rest of my drummer boys to give to the other kids. Well, that was nice of you, but it's still bedtime, so go to sleep. Good night. All right. Oh, and Amy, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mom. Good night, Ben.
Merry Christmas, my little drummer boy. Somewhere in the not-too-distant future, a piper in his car is rushing to an emergency job on Christmas Eve. Can't believe I got this call tonight. Well, at least I'll be out of the apartment. Boy, I'm really glad to have you along. I never thought I'd miss my family so much. But his client is worried. Where is that guy? I told him 630. This whole thing's going to fall apart if he doesn't get here on time. Uh, Iz is cutting it too close. I got to call him. Hello? Where the heck are you? I need you here in like 15 minutes tops. I know, I know, and I'm on my way. I'm already almost to the freeway. Oh, but it's rush hour. You'll never make it on time. Oh, yes, I will. I have a plan. It's foolproof. Whoa. Okay, okay, but everyone else is here. Everyone else? How many pipers did you need? Eleven! I told you! Eleven? Wow, this job is bigger than I thought. Okay, it's huge. Now hurry, please. Oh, okay, I gotta go. I'm gonna kill myself. Um, I, I promise I'll be there on time. Bye! jeez. Oh, I am never using Craigslist again. All right, buddy. Do your stuff, pal. Don't fail me now. Okay, the HOV lane is coming up. Man, I hope the CHP doesn't look too closely. Seriously, though, I cannot thank you for being here. Like, you, you're practically my family, my only family. Where are you? On this night before Christmas, please Craigslist send to me. Piper in a hurry. If only I had planned for this contingency, there'd be no worry. We'd be piping with alacrity. On this night before Christmas, I pray I will not see an officer of the CHP. Oh, almost there. Oh, there's the exit. Ha! We're going to make it on time. Come on! I think that's the turn. Oh, oh. Oh, is that it? Oh, please. Oh, there he is! Ha! We made it! <laughs> All right! Yes, you made it. Hey, thank you for coming out on such short notice uh, and on Christmas Eve, no less. No, no problem. Uh, all right, now show me the way. Wait, wait, whoa, what is that? Well, what is what? That thing in your hand. Um, it's a toolbox. I, I, I only brought just the one. Um, I, I thought you said there were going to be other people. Uh, I thought you put the job with you. She, they're all inside. Wait, you're a plumber, not a piper? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, damn, autocorrect. I, I got to stop placing ads on my cell phone. So you don't need a plumber? A plumber? What the heck would I do with a plumber? No, I need someone who can play the pipe for our Christmas show tomorrow. I need 11 pipers piping, not 11 plumbers plumbing. Oh, um, so then I guess you won't be needing me. Oh, wait, wait, who's that in the car with you? What? The guy in the passenger seat, in the Santa suit. He might... Oh, that's my best friend. Um, that's an inflatable Santa. Oh. Oh. I am so screwed. I'm sorry.
Oh, you know, I do have something else in my car. What? Uh, I do have a pipe, sort of. Sort of? My Vuvuzela, it's kind of like a pipe. You must be joking. No, I swear, I'm good. Okay, maybe we can make it work. We'll see. Okay, go, go ahead, play something. All right, here it goes. <laughs> All right, that's awful. <laughs> not what you were expecting? No, not really. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I wasted your time. Well, Merry Christmas. I, I hope you find someone. Oh, well, hey, listen. I really want to thank you for coming out to fix my pipes on New Year on Christmas Eve. It's okay. I was on call. <laughs> well, what's your name? Paul. Well, I'm sorry you have to work on Christmas Eve. You're going to see your family tomorrow at least, right? No, my parents retired. They moved to Texas. Couldn't afford it out here. So you have no one? Not tonight. Well, hey, you want to meet the guys? Oh, thank you, but I don't want to intrude. No, no, no way. Not at all. Tonight you're in our family. Come on in. Hey, bring the Vuvuzela with you, too. What the hell? Hey, everybody. Meet Paul, our newest piper. Paul, meet the Reseda Pipe Flitters. So, on that Christmas Eve, Peter, Paul, and indeed all of the Reseda pipe flitters learned that, even when their horn doesn't sound quite like yours, the sounds of fellowship and laughter can bring a sweet harmony to a lonely soul. And that an off-sung and time-worn song can really get punched up a notch by a vuvuzela. When used sparingly, of course. Good day to you, Lord Twizzle Sticks. Hello. Good leap day to you, too, little kitten. Oh, it's a good day for some leaping, me thinks. No, oh, here comes Lord number one. Oh. Whoa. I didn't think that it was actually real. It's not just real, it's way deeper than I thought. I thought it was some sort of metaphor or something. Apparently not. You think they would have mentioned that? Oh, here comes old number two. <laughs> not even close to the other side. Is this thing even leapable? I'm beginning to think not. It's so far. Oh, hey, look out, little sticks. We're standing here. <laughs> I don't think I want to do this anymore, Ketchum. We have to. It's tradition. I studied Leap Day for the last three years, and if we don't send ten lords a leaping, there will be dire consequences. Well, like what? Well, there's... Oh, man, I don't know. If the king and his advisors and the kings and advisors before them say we do it, then we do it. No, no, I get that. I mean, we need to listen to those that are in charge because they're in charge. But this? This, this is a lot. Oh, here comes Lord number four. <laughs> Seriously, not even close to the other side. Do you think maybe, just maybe, we're not supposed to make it? No. No. Why would they do that? I have no idea. Why do we try to leap across a stupid bit? Because we always have. 
It's an honor to go a leaping over that very, very deep pit. Oh, 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 the next load is huge. Oh, and he looks so fast and athletic. Oh, if he makes it, do we still have to leap? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one has ever made it across. What number are you? Seven. You? Ten. Well, you have the benefit of seeing everyone else go first, at least. Seeing everyone else plummet to their doom? Yes. Uh. Well, we have to do this. It's necessary for the future of our kingdom. Is it? I mean, ow. Oh. How does sending ten lords leaping across a very, very deep pit help anyone else? I don't. Oh, here comes Lord Six. <laughs> his footing there. Be careful when you get close to the edge. <laughs> I can't do this! <laughs> what you turn? Did I stutter? You have to! Why? Why do we have to? Because we were told that's how it has to be. No! I refuse! I refuse to follow along blindly! What, what happened to all those years of studying you did, huh? What what happens if we don't leap? I don't know. But I do know if I do leap, I will fall into that very, very deep pit and will most likely die. Well, not if you make it. <laughs> no one has made it across. Not yet. <laughs> oh, here I go. Huh? Wait, wait. We're stronger if we defy convention together. Oh, man, oh, man, I can't watch. <laughs> Yay! He did it. He did it. I made it. I saw. I don't know! I'm coming back! Sorry, I'm late. You will not believe the day I'm having. <laughs> Shush. Shush yourself. It hasn't even started yet. It hasn't started yet, has it? No, it hasn't even started yet. So yeah, whatever. Actually, <laughs> it has started. It's just that strangely dressed kid up there next to that thing. That child is a partridge and that other child is a tree. Really? They stuck a cold in that tiny thing? There's gotta be some law against that. Shh. You're probably making more noise than I am at this point. Mom, can you please not make a scene? I'm not making a scene. I'm just stating the fact. Just watch the show. What show are we watching? They're acting out the 12 Days of Christmas. And where are we in this opus? Two turtle doves. Oh, I think I need a drink. Well, you dare take that flask out. What? Not now. What are they wearing? Mom! <laughs> it's just a question. They're supposed to be... I, actually, I don't know. They're geese, maybe? And what are the others? I'm pretty sure they're eggs. 
This is the strangest show. I feel like Pink Floyd ought to be playing in the background. <laughs> Shh. You weren't thinking the same thing. Mom, please. Started it. You're worse than the kids. And that child up there, dressed like Elton John. That's a swan. I'm sure. No, but that's where we are in the song, so that's my best guess. Are you sure you don't want a train? Yes! Shh! Sorry. See what you made me do? They'd stop shushing us if I let them know that I brought enough for everyone. No! No. Just, how do we even have enough for everyone? Sweetie, this ain't my first rodeo. Keep it where, wherever you're keeping it. This is a school for crying out loud. We don't want a repeat of last year's Christmas. Not ever gonna let that go, are you? I'm just saying I would rather not relive that particular moment. That is the way eggnog is supposed to be made. That's the only thing I'm saying. Not when there are children around. Oh, you're no fun. That's supposed to be fun. I'm a mother, or have you forgotten? How could I forget? <sighs> what on God's green earth is that? Oh, that's a... I, I have no idea, but a mother put a lot of time into making that, so stop being so judgmental. Shh. <laughs> yes, exactly. Shh. You are taking their side, you traitor. Besides, I think they were just you that time. They probably were, but deep down, you know it was meant for you. I don't know why you come to these. You never have anything nice to say. To be supportive. This is not being supportive. It is. I'm here sitting through this. Through this. And afterwards, I plan to lie about how much I enjoyed it. How is that not being supportive? You are just unbelievable. Who's being judgmental now? I am not being judgmental. Again, if you don't enjoy these types of family activities, I don't know why you're here. I don't know why you even bothered. Oh my goodness. There she is. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> she's so adorable. I think I'm going to cry. Because if you start doing it, then I'm going to start doing it. <laughs> now look at your turn. Oh. She's just beautiful up there with those other girls it's um, what are they they're nine ladies dancing yeah sure whatever oh she's beautiful oh, she is, isn't she? <laughs> Shh. i swear i'm coming back there it's not gonna be pleasant yeah cool it some people. Tell me about it. rush over here before finishing my chores. You know Papa is going to be real upset if I don't finish cleaning up the ox pan. If I told you something, something amazing that I discovered, do you promise not to ask how I discovered it? Well, I guess that depends on what you discovered. You know what? Never mind. Get it. It's stupid anyway. Kind of embarrassing. I even thought it was a good idea. No, Bailey, come on. Tell me. It's okay. You, you're my sister, and if you discover something amazing, well, then gosh darn it, I want to hear it. Okay. Try this. What is it? Just try it, Montana. Well, golly, that's delicious. Well, what on earth is it? Where can I get some more? 
See, that's just the thing. I got it right here on the farm. On this farm? Did Daddy try brewing something new? I, this isn't like anything you've ever brewed before. <laughs> it's organic. Straight from the source. Well, what? What is it? Well, what source? Well, you know our cow, Mulan? Well, of course I know Mulan. She's one of our many cows that we will one day eat. Praise you, Lord. Well, she is good for more than just meat. This liquid came out of her. Oh, well, Daddy, dang it, Bailey. Where well, came out of where? What, what part of her did this came out of? Well, you know her big dangly udders where the baby cows drink from? It, it what? Has... What? 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 what you drink that? Are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I wouldn't understand. I shouldn't have even told you. Oh, to make me understand. Why on this flat earth would you look at a Mulan out in the field relaxing, feeding her babies, and think, what if? No, Montana, it's not that. It was outside and out of water, so I improvised. It was real nice about it, though. Very motherly. So, you thought, I'll just steal the baby cow milk. Because I wasn't loved by Mama. This has nothing to do with Mama. <sighs> I was thirsty and Mulan was there. You said it yourself. This stuff is delicious. That was before I knew what it was. That doesn't change the fact that I might have just discovered something revolutionary. This could change the world. We could produce milk and sell it to the other settlements. This could be our full-time job instead of farming. We could call ourselves Milkmaid. No one's gonna drink this once they find out where it's from. I feel sick to my stomach just thinking about it. And Milkmaids, really? What kind of a name is that? A good name? <laughs> we would sit and milk the cows all day long. We could even get Aunt Betsy, Aunt Jessie, Cousin Janet, Cousin Barbara, Cousin Sally, oh, and Grandma involved. That's what? Eight? We could be the eight milkmaids and just mass produce this stuff. Why would anyone drink from an animal if they don't have to? You didn't even have to. Babies drink their mother's milk to get big and strong. Why shouldn't I drink Mulan's milk to do the same if my mama isn't around? Well, that's just different. You're an adult now. An adult who's discovering new things and bringing her farm into the <laughs> Just think about what else we could start milking. We could milk the cows, the goats, the sheep. Heck, we could even milk the almonds. Now you're just talking crazy. You mean utter nonsense? Dead nabbit, Bailey. Don't be so moody. How long have you been saving up these cow jokes? You're really not well. Gee, Bailey, you really don't look so good. Yeah. Boy, you are burning up. Let's get you inside. I'm sorry you lost Mama at such an early age. But, but you can't go drinking the cow milk. It's just messed up. I accidentally called her mom. Let's get you inside. You've been out in the sun too long. No sleep will do you good. It would really help me sleep. Huh? A nice glass of warm milk. We are never telling Dad about this. Oh, and you'll never guess what delicious thing came out of the chicken. This 
is absolutely inexcusable. That's why I'm here, Mayor Vance. We need more support to contain- I mean you closing down the lake. I'm doing my job. It's too dangerous to leave the lake open with those animals on the loose. As Chief Ranger, your job is to keep that lake open to the public at all costs. Enmity Lake is this town's primary source of income. If it's closed, we lose tourists. No tourists means no revenue. No revenue means Enmityville goes broke. I know how this town's economy works. Good. I had it explained to me a half an hour ago and I can already feel the details fading from my brain. People's lives are at stake. You can't put money over the well-being of your citizens. <laughs> of course I can. That's what being a mayor is all about. That and all the hot cocoa I can drink. Mm. Oh, I go to the bathroom 12 times a day, but it's worth it. Mm. You can't ignore this. People are suffering. You're darned right we are. Excuse me, I'm in the middle of ignoring someone? My name is Candace DeFrank, and I represent the Citizens Against the Repression of Economic Nuance. You're with Karen? I am Karen. And who might you be? And why has nobody offered me a cocoa? Um, this is Penny Bronson, a chief ranger at the local branch of the National Park Service. Charmed. I'd shake your hand, but you look Germany. She's also the one responsible for the closure of the lake. What? Then you're exactly the person I need to berate into submission. You've turned my beloved Edmundville into a ghost town. Also, there aren't enough marshmallows in my cocoa. There should be eight. I count five. I don't know if you're both aware of the tragedy going on in your own town. No. Nope. I second that note. But some of the local fauna have contracted an aggressive strain of rabies and are wreaking havoc. We have counted four new cases of the disease in the swans alone. That makes seven swans of swimming pulling unsuspecting people into the water and turning them into pulled pork. All that remained of the last victim was his underwear and a gold tooth. Uh, I've seized those items for the treasury. Are you talking about the tooth or? This is fake news. I've lived here all my life and never once even seen a swan. This town holds a swan festival every year. Our high school football team is called the Swans. There's even a swan statue right outside of the building. I'm afraid I'm going to have to agree with uh, Candace on this one, Penny. She's a white lady with a short haircut. I'm legally bound to side with her. And if you don't comply, Penny, I and my friends will give the National Park Service a one-star review. We're a federally funded organization, not a Benihana. Uh, if there's nothing else, Ms. Bronson, I have to write some all caps tweets against my political rivals. There are murder birds in your town and you want to listen to this, this armchair activist over an expert? We need to order a rabies vaccine yesterday. Vaccines cost money, which is sparse because someone closed the lake. I'm talking about you, Penny. Did that scan? Just reopen the lake and everything will work itself out. People are dying. I'm going to die if I don't have my highlights retouched. I should have known you were going to act like an idiot about this, Mayor. Yes. That's very much on you, whatever you said. All I heard was I should have and assumed the rest was an apology. No, I take it back. I did know how you'd react. Are you both enjoying your cocoa? Hmm. Yes, you're welcome. Mine's too hot. Bring me a fresh one with ice, and I don't want the ice to get any smaller. Obviously, you're both behind on current events. What's today's newspaper got to do with current events? Mayor, this says that the infected swans swarmed a local cocoa factory. Thousands of pounds of, of cocoa have been infected with rabies. Oh, blast it! I knew my secretary was trying to warn me about my cocoa today. Oh, I thought she was fat-shaming me. Oh. Are you going to take this crisis seriously now? 
Or are you going to wait until the swans infect something else you love? Oh, don't be silly. How can they infect hairspray? For crying out loud, just order the vaccine before it's too late. Fine, but I want to go on record. I am not doing this because you say so. Whatever. Maybe now you'll listen to people who are more informed than you. Oh, crap. I hate Christmas. I hate the noise, the lights, the movies, the season, the pressure, the chaos, the songs, oh, especially that song. I hate the memories it forces you to, but mainly I hate it because. Hey! These two are my brothers, oh. and they're the only family I have left. Oh, oh. oh Ben, Hello, idiots. Merry Christmas. Good morning, Ebenezer. Oh, no ghosts visited last night, I see. Oh, we should work in a Scrooge routine. Oh, that might work. That might work. We could have... um. So you guys are still performing, huh? Yes, ma'am. For your holiday cheer, the circus is still here. The show must go on. Line. Ba -dum -ba. Well, good for you two. So... Let's just get this over with, shall we? That's the spirit, Emma. <laughs> Where are we at again? Yeah, what year? Six. It's been six years. How could you not remember? So that would be six geese a laying. Remember, remember how she would mess up the lyrics to that song? Nine babies dancing. Two turtle dumps. Did you guys find your boxes yet? <sighs> yes, mother. Yes, Mother Goose. Please oh, don't. oh, wait. Didn't she used to call you that? Oh, my God. She did. <laughs> right. Because <of> the... honking. <laughs> Geese are terrifying. Oh, Emma was terrifying. Still is. <laughs> Will you two shut up? Just stop it. Well, sorry. I was just. Can we please just get this over with? Emma. Yes, she did call me Mother Goose because she didn't like me very much. And because I was her older sister. I was supposed to take care of her. And she's gone six years now and all we have left of her is this stupid holiday tradition, this stupid game she makes us do. And all it does every year is remind me of how she's not here, how I could <laughs> Hey, Emma, I think you were on mute. We, we didn't get any of that. Oh my God, I hate you both so much. <laughs> we, we know, but you're wrong about her. She loved you most of all. It's true. She just, well, Emma, you're just really, really fun to mess with. Thanks. And don't think for a minute you didn't protect her. You know, Dr. Kim told us once, she probably lived another three years because of the love she got. That was you. Yeah. Also, she put you in charge of this because it was important to her for us to have something after she was gone. She couldn't trust us. We're idiots. <laughs> Speaking of. Yeah, we're ready. Read the note. <laughs> Hey, losers, Merry Christmas. First of all, let me just say, dying of cancer, overrated. Second, as I approach the end, ooh, how dark, I've begun to focus on what's important. 
family and tradition. It's what I'll miss most. So Glam Fam, here's a new holiday tradition. One to help you always remember your little tiny Tim of a sis. For my two knucklehead brothers, <laughs> I think 12 years should be enough time for you to mourn me. Mother Goose might take you a little longer. Anyway, I've made 12 boxes for you, each representing a line from the greatest Christmas song ever. Each year, I want you to open the box and incorporate what's inside into your circus act. Six, I'm giving you your own special item and hopefully one day you'll get in on the act. Cherish them and each other and remember me so I don't have to come back and haunt you buttheads. Okay, make this entertaining. I'll be watching from wherever. Love you all, Lily. You heard her, clown boys. Open them up. What do you think is in here? Well, it's always something to juggle. Maybe stuffed geese toys? <laughs> oh, my God. What the hell? What's in there? Eggs. Why eggs? Eggs? Oh, wait. Oh, six geese are laying. <laughs> so these eggs are six years old? <laughs> this is disgusting. Well, they're not going to juggle themselves. You don't really expect us to do this. No, I mean, it's only your dead sister's wish, but whatever. Oh, oh, hi. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love Christmas. <laughs> Well, where should we begin? Pinecone, do you have anything to say? All right, then. It's safe to assume that you both realize the amount of trouble you're in. It was an accident, Mayor Mabel. How were we to know? By the sign that said, Fragile do not touch. Oh, right. Guess it's good to read sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> It sure is. And now we have five shattered golden rings and their pieces are scattered throughout the land. They were just decoration. Five stupid rings that have been hanging over the kingdom since forever. Uh, so what if we maybe kind of broke them and the wood nymphs ran off with them? I cannot even begin to describe your ignorance. Those rings aren't just decoration. They were the links that tethered the protective shell over the kingdom. Now we are exposed. Us Keeblarians aren't built to fight. We exist only to make mistletoe and wreaths and spiked eggnog. And? And now we are prime real estate. Should any of the other maritime kingdoms find out, we are defenseless. You hear that? Oh no, her scouts, they're already testing the boundaries. Soon they'll discover the spell is gone in a matter of time. We need to get it back, quick. Okay, well, I, I, why don't we just replace them? Here, I've got some things in my bag that should work. Um, here, I got a handful of washers and lug nuts. Would that work? Or, um, let's see, uh, what about this? Hmm? Or, uh, I don't know, I got a bunch of stuff. I like to collect um, yellow, little yellow brown things. <laughs> I noticed, Lise. And uh, see, oh, I've been looking for this. Sweet. Uh. Mm -hmm. Ever since you fell out of that tree, Pinecone, you've been nothing but trouble. And now it's all culminated in this. This is not my fault. I never touched those rings. Lise, who told you to take the golden rings? Pinecone? That is so not winter fresh. I have half a mind to banish you. For good, this time. Your shenanigans have become too troublesome over the years, and now we're going to pay dearly for this. 
Oh, oh, come on. I'm serious. The Nutcracker could send his army here at any moment, or the abominable snowman could send down an avalanche from Evergreen Mountain, or Mr. Cratchit could force us to listen to one of his long, woe is me Christmas stories again, or... I, I get it. What do you want me to do? You must collect pieces of the golden rings and break them. Oh, fun! I think I have just the thing that'll help us. I will do no such thing. You can't send me out there into danger. I'm just a child. You're 35. Oh, yeah, it's definitely here. I found it a long time ago. just never thought I'd have any use for it. I'm not going. I don't owe this kingdom anything. May I remind you that Got we... Got it. What in God's shimmering light is that? Holy sizzling wassail. It really is, isn't it? Is that what I think it is? Oh, damn, Leaf. You really blundered bad this time. What? Why? That's Santa's ring. The one ring to rule them all. He's been looking for that for ages. If he finds out it's here... I am sorry, Mayor Maple. I am sorry for everything. I'll reform. I'll do anything that you ask. Fine, Cone. I just don't want a lump of coal for Christmas. Over a ring? Wouldn't Santa be delighted to see that it's been found? Seeing as how the situation has changed, Pinecone, there is something you can do to redeem yourself. There is? Yes, there is. Hey! Leaf! Uh, why don't we go out into the forest? Down by I'd the love, river. I'd love to. <laughs> Just make sure it can't be found. I understand. Uh, yeah! Uh, uh, we can talk about how we get the rings back. Oh, I'd love that. And can you tell me about the rabbits again? And those two always know how to make things worse. <laughs> now I have to deal with the five golden rings later. But for now, oh, hello, Smeagol. I've got a job for you. The door's unlocked. Let yourself in. Yo, hello. Sorry, I'm running behind. My sous chef spilled a whole thing of batter down the front of her dress, and I had to start over after I got her to stop crying. I don't know why you just don't fire her. Did you get our calls? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got all your many, many, many calls and messages. I'm fine. I'm just looking for something. What, your costume? I have an extra top hat and cravat you can borrow. No, no, it's, it's not the costume. It's when Rachel was at Cedars, she said she had hid something in the Christmas box and wanted us to have it for the show. And I completely forgot about it until tonight. So she left you a chore? Being married to you is a chore. She left him as a gift. Look, I, I get the whole gift thing, but is this something we can do later? I mean, no one's expected you to do baking and stringing popcorn and all that stuff. It's not stuff. It's brownies. Because we always bring them and everybody loves them. And, and I'm not going to spend my entire evening fielding questions about how I'm doing because, oh, he forgot the brownies. He must be losing it, okay? I think something's burning. No, no, no. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Could you be a little more considerate? What? Everyone's walking on eggshells around him. He needs at least one friend to treat him normal. He says he's doing fine. I'm going to believe him. 
Must be one hell of a brownie. We're not leaving him like this. If we run late, we'll just skip, I don't know, We Three Kings. Of course, my best song. For real, though. It's what the pastor dude was saying. After the service, everyone just goes on with their lives. But he can't. You're right. Not about cutting We Three Kings. <laughs> Do that again. They're <laughs> ruined. They're burning. <laughs> I ruined it. The whole tradition, because I can't do it, and I don't want to do it. She did it. Just relax, okay? An entire pound of chocolate chips just incinerated. Just listen to me. What? She never made the brownies. I hate to talk bad about my girl because, you know, I'm not about that, but look at you. She picked up those lies at the stop and shop and just threw them in the oven to warm them up, which is a great idea. Wish I'd thought of that one. And just put them on a plate. And she hit him in your wedding. Oh my God, Jimmy, read the room. So there are things I still don't know about her. Things that I'll never get to know. <laughs> I was supposed to know her forever. At the service... Someone told me I should be grateful for the time that we had together and for the people still around it. And I shouldn't focus on the time we lost. <laughs> Don't tell me to be grateful. It wasn't enough time. It was never going to be. I know I was gypped. And I know that she would hate to see you like this and to see her house looking like a... a... Uh, Mall Santa's refugee camp? Well, that's her fault. Because I have no idea what I'm looking for. It, it could be anything. It could be right in front of me. It, it could be this. Okay, so she left you something, but no clues. And it could literally be anything. Not a clue exactly. She said it would call to me. Oh, I got it. Alexa, where is Rachel's thing? We don't have an Alexa. That would have been cool, though. <laughs> So, and this is just an idea. Why don't you get guys stay here and look for the thing, and I can go do the set real quick, and then when we come back, we can no. hold. No. The only thing Rachel would hate more than me not doing it is you doing all of it. All right. I'm just going to try calling the old folks home and just let them know that we're running a little bit late. Calling? I think that's it. Uh... Her stocking, calling birds, collie birds, blackbirds. <laughs> uh, rock stars, if you're reading this, heaven gated alto this Christmas. Maybe one day you can make me into a cool hologram like they did with Tupac. But until then, remember that the Collie Bird's song can wake the dead and lull the living to sleep. Try not to put the audience to sleep. I also realize that the four Calling Bird carolers may not make sense without me. But if four minus one is three, then three plus one is four. Think about it. And as always, my love, a kiss for good luck. Rach. Uh, a little more cryptic than I was expecting. And a little more math. Sounds like she was on some pretty sweet pain meds. Sounds like she'll be listening for us tonight. Oh, she will. And that reminds me, she would not want us to be late. So can we get going now? Uh, yeah, I'll be right behind you guys. Elliot? Dr. Jordan? 
Elliot, can you hear me? I'm so sorry. It's so late. I just I think that I'm in a crisis here. Wait, wait, what what, what kind of crisis? 911 crisis? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm wearing a cashmere sweater. I'm not going to do anything like that. Jesus. Well, what uh, kind of crisis, Elliot? It's the chickens. The chicken? Yeah, the chickens. The chickens? Uh, the crab court chickens. Uh, Amy and Joanna's chickens. Your wife and daughter's chickens. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. It's so cold outside at night, and I, I took all the blankets out from the closet, and I put them in the coop, but, I mean... It, I, I, they don't seem cold, but I don't, I don't know because I'm concerned because it's the coldest it's been since we got them. And I have no idea for, the, for their, 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 their cold tolerance because, I mean, I was born in Marina Del Rey, for, for Christ's sake. I, I don't know how to take care of livestock. Elliot, I just want to be, be clear here. Now, you required an emergency session with your psychiatrist yeah. on Christmas Eve at 930 at night because you're concerned about chickens? Yeah, Exactly. Listen, I mean this with all due respect, but I don't think you're using the coping skills that we were talking about. No, this is not that. Okay, I am. I, I look these these chickens. That's the only it's the only responsibility. It's the only thing that I'm supposed to do, right? Is take care of these damn chickens. Okay, I raised a kid, but I can't keep I can't keep three hens from from dying in the elements. First I mean, of all, Elliot, my wife has seven chickens, and they can be comfortable in temperatures as low as twenty degrees, and it's got to be you know fifty three outside. But, but I think you're exercising some transference right now, and I'd like to talk about that. No, no, listen, that, okay, you got to understand where I'm coming from. These aren't regular chickens, okay? They're crab core chickens. They're, it's a very rare breed from France. All right, their names are, are, are Genevieve, Marceline, and, and Lulu, okay? beautiful names. Yeah, oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, we let Joanna pick out the names. They're, she loves everything French. That's why she picked the breed. I mean, all, all of her dolls... Even have French names. All of all of, our, all of our dolls have French names. Can I ask you a question, Elliot? Yeah, sure. How long before the accident did Amy and Joanna adopt these chickens? Uh, we got them in June, so uh, they had four, four months with them, and they really loved these chickens. I mean. I mean, God, uh, Amy and Joanna were out there every day with them, I mean, especially when they were uh, you know, chicks. You know, they look, looked like the looked like uh, like uh, what are those dust bunnies? Like little just black orbs, like <laughs> like coal or, or or you know dirt. Just I told them one day that they were going to come home to chicken soup. I, just, I look around. I look around this place at all the things that they've touched. Like Amy's sweaters and, and Joanna's scooter and, and, her, and, her, and her books. These chickens are the only thing that they've touched that are my responsibility now. They're alive and they've, they've known my girls. They've, they've known what it's like to be loved, loved by them. I... Elliot, listen, I understand how, how challenging these last few months have been for you. Christmas is an indescribably difficult time for people in grief, especially the first Christmas. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I, and I knew, and I knew it was going to be hard. I did. I knew it was going to be hard. I knew it was going to be lonely <laughs> and uh, and uh, scary and just weird. I, I, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Like, like, like I keep, I just keep wondering where they are. Like they're just they're late coming home from. Piano or, or karate. <laughs> I, keep, I keep expecting Amy to get on my case because I put up a tree yet. Or even bought one, no less. <sighs> if you don't mind, I'd like to circle back to, to something you, you said a, a few sessions ago. Okay. If you recall, we discussed the difficulty it would be knowing that you're not going to receive any gifts from them this year. And not because of some materialistic thing, obviously. But yeah, because, because of my desire to... to 
keep a piece of them with me. Another piece of them with me. I'd like you to consider something for me. You think that your dedication to these hens, these chickens, could be rooted not only in your obvious desire to protect Amy and Joanna as a husband and a father, but in the feeling that these chickens were the last gift that they've given you. Uh. You said that, that, that the girls loved the chickens, that the chickens knew the girls. They knew what it was like to be loved by them. <laughs> Is it possible that you've come to perceive this love, right? This pure, untroubled love between, you know, something so vulnerable and the person or, or, or the people that are supposed to protect them from the world lives on in these chickens? Maybe it's not the cold that's troubling you, Elliot, but the uncertainty that anything so wonderful could also be taken from you. But uncertainty isn't a monster, Elliot. It's just another deeply flawed thing in a beautiful life. But just as the love that you have for them and that they had for you and lives on just the same. Thank you, Dr. Jordan. Thank you. Thank you, Elliot. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. And a Joyeux Noel to the chickens. <laughs>
we stink so bad that even if if we meet someone who isn't totally repulsed by our physical appearances they wouldn't want to be around us for more than a second anyway so no donatella don't expect me to shout cowabunga every morning just because we're alive just because it's christmas i knew you were lonely it's fine things will get better right someday I'm the one who should be better, a better sister, a better friend. No, I don't. I won't be so caught up in all my stuff, my computers. I don't need to always have my beak inside some book or to be fidgeting with gadgets. No, 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 no. It, it's cool that you're a dweeb. Don't change for me, please. But, but you have to understand, you have your you your gizmos to distract you from what's going on up there in the real world your your geekiness to keep you happy that's great for you but i for me i don't have anything to keep me busy except my thoughts those earrings i got you i thought they might help with your confidence you're already beautiful and amazing i just want to help make you feel that way we we don't have external ears, so, um... They're clip-ons! See? Just attach them to your head feathers, and... I'm sorry. I, I don't think so, Donatella. Okay. It's just the way you talk about the pizza delivery boy every day. I thought maybe you might want to get his attention, so... Pizza delivery boy? Well, duh! You're always talking about his smile, how he's so friendly. The pizza delivery boy, grody, not even. Oh, never mind then. My bad. Like I said, I can take the earrings back. No biggie. Yeah, you should. I don't care about boys anyway. They smell gross. Got it. Well, the other gift might be a better fit for you then. Well, what do you think? You got a lot of feelings, a lot of big, intelligent ideas inside that brain of yours. Why not let them out? Painting? Drawing? Well, there's a journal in there too for you to write in if you want. Express yourself. Discover who you really are. Through art. Why not give it a go? You might like it. Heck, you might love it! Put your feelings down on paper, on canvas. Why keep them bottled up forever? Set yourself free! Oh, Nutella. <laughs> you might be an artist and not even know it yet. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> oh, I got myself some supplies too. This could be our thing. <laughs> what we do together, yeah? Well, other than scrapping down pizza and kicking butt. <laughs> oh, Bunga. Really? Yeah. Thanks, dude. Okay. Kill Bunga. Kill Bunga. Bunga. Merry Christmas, Partridge family! <laughs> Hello! Where is everybody? <laughs> you, know, uh -huh. you know you can mute yourself, right? Oh, I know. <laughs> We're the only ones here? Well, it's going to be next Christmas until our parents figure out the Zoom, but Max will be here shortly. Oh, good. I need to talk to you before anyone else gets here. Oh, what's up? <gasps> Did you and Francisco get back together? What? Ew, no. He moved out a week ago, and good riddance. Yes. But I want to talk about Max. Have you spoken to him lately? Um, that has been a while, actually. Since, not since Thanksgiving. Why? 
called the house a few times, but Julie didn't answer either. I'm worried about them. <laughs> when do you not? Look, we both know he never knows when to take a break. Oh, and speaking of workaholics, how's your job? <laughs> dealing with lawyers from home is more like dealing with preschoolers. <laughs> how's about you? Any luck? Well, same old, same old. Not much call for DJs during COVID, so... <gasps> Speak of the devil! <laughs> <laughs> Talking about me again, huh? We're just complaining about work, or lack thereof, in my case. Hey, but don't worry about the ugly Christmas sweater thing, because Becky didn't get the memo either. Uh, what are you wearing, Becky? I thought it was supposed to be ugly. It is ugly! I would never wear this, but, and... It's functional. <laughs> <laughs> and what does yours say, Michael? <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> oh. oh, Aunt Sylvia's going to get you. <laughs> That's why I got it. <laughs> you know she can't reach through the computer and slap you. Exactly. <laughs> but at least I'm wearing a Christmas sweater. Mm -hmm. This is a Christmas shirt. The Nightmare Before Christmas is not a Christmas movie. Neither is Die Hard. Oh, don't on. start that again. <laughs> sorry. I, I didn't have a chance to get to the store. I've been working extra shifts. Oh, I'm practically living at the hospital. You're lucky I'm not wearing scrubs, huh? I'm sure Julie's thrilled with that. Where is she anyway? Uh, she's um, at her mother's again. Oh, Max. How long this time? Two and a half weeks. Maxie, you've always been so laser focused, and that is great when you're wearing your doctor hat. But you have to remember, you have a husband hat, too. When I can stop trying to save lives for five minutes, I'll dust it off. Hmm? We're just worried about you, cuz. And Jules, you can't ignore your wife until after the pandemic is over or your marriage will be, too. Hmm? Well, despite sounding like Dr. Phil, I agree with Michael. You have to make each other a priority. Or what's the point of any of it? You'll win this battle and lose the war. Hey, you know, it, this is the part where mom usually very drunkenly bursts into song, right? <laughs> and where's Uncle Keith with a story reminding us of how much harder it was when he was our age, huh? Oh, what about Uncle Billy with his random stories about famous people that he may or may not have actually met? Well, I haven't talked to Dad in a couple of weeks, so we may have to do without his stories tonight. Mm. Oh. oh, no. No, we won't. I got this. <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> Do you do you remember the time I, I was working the drive through at, at Carl's Jr. and and Mick Jagger ordered two of everything? True story. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 Uncle Keith. In my day, we didn't have drive throughs We had to get out of the car, walk across the parking lot, and get our food. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. In a partridge, in a pear tree, sing along, Partridge family. <laughs> Michael Andrew Partridge, that sweater, if I could reach through this computer. Well, in my day, we had really ugly sweaters. Knitted by Grandma Partridge, <laughs> made of wool. Hey, um, I met David Cassidy at a Trader Joe's once. He, he took the last sriracha hummus. Snatched it right out of my hand, he did. <laughs> True story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Gotta love him. Yeah, you do. <laughs> well, you need to call Julie, Max. I know. I'll call her this week. No. I'll call her tonight. It's it's not too late. That's right. It's not too late. You go get her, cuz. <laughs> Tell her we miss her. And send her a love. Okay. 
Hello, Jules. Yeah, it's, it, it's me. Merry Christmas.